This is an absolutely massive OTA, one of the biggest we've seen in the last several months, and it has a ton of nerfs, a bunch of buffs, and a whole lot to talk about, so let's get started. Right off the top here, let's talk about Blob. Now, this is a very good change for Blob. It's seeing a 29% meta share. It's kind of crazy because Blob was actually on the downhill slide uh, up until Airstream's released. Airstream comes out, Blob was already going to be a good card there, naturally to, like, counter Darkhawk and just to take advantage of whatever the hell's in the deck. But then what happened was is this ongoing ability this ongoing uh, campy move was never really like a useful part of his kit if anything it was detrimental with cannon uh, cannonball and then all of a sudden uh, mystiques were using that ongoing ability to copy the blob effect and so you had a blob and then a three power blob as well and so like mystique blob was just an absolutely insane combination and i don't think that was actually ever truly intended so they got rid of the ongoing ability it now prevents mystique from being the combo play with blob you still of course can taskmaster him but that's two extra energy that's a totally different thing than a three cost mystique so ultimately i think this is a very notable change whenever you have a card like blob hitting 30 percent of the meta almost I mean, you got to do something. And what's crazy is that that's not even the highest meta share we're talking about today. We're talking about an even bigger meta share in Mockingbird going from a 5.9 to a 6.10. This is pretty significant. Now, it was running a 36% meta share, which is extraordinarily high. Um, a similar card was like the Red Hulk on release was at 33%. To give you an idea of how prevalent this card is, it doesn't help that it's super good in Erisham as well, where Erisham has a bunch of cards naturally that didn't start in your deck. It works well with Loki and etc, etc, so Mockingbird works perfectly there. Mockingbird's been a key component of like zoo decks and a bunch of different decks with Sasquatch and Mysterios and Squirrel Girls and all these types of things, and it's been pretty damn good. But it's been too good. It has a 54% win rate post infinite, a decent cube rate, but it's that meta share that's so critical. It's a key cog in so many different decks. Now, with this here, Yes, you are getting additional power, that's notable. It's also shan so that's kind of like, I'd almost rather it stay at nine from a power perspective, but it's that extra energy which is extremely difficult. That extra energy is gonna make it less likely to be a, uh, well, a free play whenever the heck you want it to be, right? So it's still gonna be discounted heavily. It's still gonna have an absolute, uh, you know, strong, kind of showing in a lot of different meta decks but this is a probably a very necessary change that had to happen the change from six to uh, five to nine to six to ten is significant from two perspectives the energy and the shan chi ability because now it's often put out earlier right how many times have you seen like a mockingbird on turn three or four well now it's going to be at risk to getting punched out. Then that takes us to Hydra Bob. Now they did announce this change about an hour before the rollover. Now I know a lot of people watch right now are like, hey Alex, I didn't even see it. Well, they announced it on Discord and stuff like that. Um, it would have been a little better if they announced it earlier. I'm glad they announced it at all because people that are on the fence about Hydra Bob wouldn't have realized like, hey, a 1-4 to a 1-5, that's a significant buff. Now, these win rates, I don't know what's going on. I don't, like, I try to, I, I filter for, like, the Agatha stacks. I don't know what people are, like, drunk brewing with uh, with uh, with Hydra Bob like this. He's better than a 32% win rate, even as a 1-4. I thought he was pretty good, honestly, in some of my uh, my kind of testing in Zoo decks. I liked Martyr better because the extra power. But now he's a 1-5, and he doesn't actively try to kill you the way Martyr does. He's just a better Martyr for the most part. So... I actually think this is a pretty decent one drop. I mean, what else do you want? If you think about like a Maximus is a 2-7, this is a 1-5 and it's not actively trying to destroy you. It has like some, like you don't play it in an Ant-Man lane and allow your opponent to snap and then mess up your Ant-Man location. Like it takes some thought, but overall, I mean, this is a probably pretty damn decent, man. 1-5? Um, I kind of wish they announced the intention to change a little earlier, but they're in a tricky spot. They only have a week. How much data can they generate in a week? People were, weren't really playing it as a 4% meta share, so they probably changed it as fast as they could. But I know that there's going to be people out there that are kind of frustrated with a card getting changed as fast as Hydra Bob has. What I will say, though, however, is that Glenn, the uh, the kind of lead of the balance team here at uh, Second Dinner, has mentioned that they do aim to make every single card playable. And so if a card releases critically underpowered, even if you pulled it from a spotlight cast, you should rest assured knowing that they're going to make it playable, right? They're going to buff it. Uh, we've seen this a couple times now, and Hydra Bob is probably amongst the fastest we've seen 
And again, my experience is better than 32%. So I think this is going to be a pretty significant change. It wouldn't surprise me if Hydrobob starts making its way into some of the zoo based decks. This video is brought to you by Crushers. Crushers is a real time PVP puzzle battler with deep strategic elements for players looking to challenge themselves against other players across the world. I've actually been playing Crushers a lot on my spare time. I've been having an absolute blast. There are currently 30 heroes in the game, each of which have unique abilities, unique statistics, and all of which are collectible right now for free. Here's an example of a team composition in Crushers, and we have one hero for each individual colored element on the board, and one of my absolute favorite in the game, the Storm Witch, who reduces the damage output of your enemies. It's very important to note that every single hero in the game does have their own statistics, the speed at which they generate their ability, their hit points, their attack, and of course their defense. And you're going to want to consider where you place them on the board in order to maximize their ability to survive a match of crushers. Crushers is currently in closed beta, but I've got fantastic news. Using the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below and my exclusive access code Alexander, you will gain early access to the game and start playing today for free. And you can also go to the store, scroll down to the bottom here, go to the supporter creator, and you can actually input code Alexander. And of course, that supports me and my content as well. Definitely check out the game. It's a ton of fun. Now take this to Ravona Renslayer. Pour one out. This is one of my favorite cards in the game. Has been for the longest time. In the favorite, uh, kind of favorite at every cost segment that Cozy and I do on the Snapchat. I always bring up Ravona. I'm a huge Ravona lover. And to see Ravona getting knocked down from a 2-3 to a 2-2, I mean, it makes sense. I don't want to cry about it. This has been a truly remarkable uh, two-costed card. Three power always felt very, very good for what you were getting. Um, I don't think this hurts Ravona all that much because Ravona, yeah, you like that extra power, but... It's all about like that early Hobgoblin, Green Goblin. It's all about the Mystique Iron uh, kind of Iron Man and all those types of things. It's the synergies that Ravona provides that generates the power, not so much Ravona herself. And so this change probably overall necessary. It was only a 9% meta share, but I feel like this is a change in response to perhaps cards that are coming out in the future. They're looking at it like... Ravona's going to be a problem. We got to, you know, take a little heat off for a little bit. And so that's exactly what this is. I'm okay with it. And this is easy to change back if Ravona falls off a cliff, but I don't think she will because as more cards get added to Marvel Snap, this is one of those cards. I should just, you know, trademark the saying, but it's going to age like fine wine because it's only going to get better with more cards in the game. And that takes us to Viper. I actually really like this change a lot. They, they've been moving Viper around quite a bit. And uh, what they're doing is that you're not seeing a power difference. You're seeing a change to the text here. The prior text was on reveal. One of your other cards here switches sides. This made it super hard to play later in the game because you could accidentally kick a high powered card over. But now it's been changed to on reveal. One of your other cards here with the lowest power switches sides. So it guarantees to hit the hood a rock or whatever even if you have a high, another high powered card there this is really important it also provides for counterplay against like junk based decks so if someone throws over a, a green goblin or hobgoblin you can very accurately knock that out so if you have a lane with like angela and the green goblin it well you can just knock that green goblin back right and that's pretty damn good this is a very significant buff and i think that uh well it's not going to be like an auto include because it's oddly specific the way it's worded I think it's going to have some usability and uh, I'm going to be interested in experimenting with, with Viper because I've actually liked Viper in the past, but she has been tricky and has been a dead card drawn on five and six. So very good change. It needed something because as you can see, these stats are absolutely terrible. That takes us to our next card, which is definitely not terrible. These statistics are, are inaccurate. I almost didn't want to include them because at a 0.2% play rate, like you're not getting accurate statistics. Listen, Sauron has traditionally been one of the absolute best cards in Marvel Snap. And what this is, this buff is not really like, a, oh, we got to buff Sauron. Because like what Sauron, again, this is another card where it's like Ravona. It's not so much about Sauron. It's about what Sauron activates, right? It's taking away the text from Red Skull, Typhoid Mary, etc., right? Ebony Maw, that's where the power resides. And I think what the important thing here to understand is, is that those decks, the Shuri decks, the Taskmaster decks, the Red Skull, they're already good. However... People don't play them. And with this change, I think it's very clear to me, and we have another change later as well, that Second Dinner is trying to maximize the amount of playable archetypes. They're adding Ajax for like high evil style plays and stuff, and even high evil got buffed prior. They're trying to generate more types of decks that you can play. Sauron is obviously a key component to the Sauron Shuri packages. They haven't been seen play. A little bit of a buff maybe spur some interest, right? Maybe, maybe I'll make a video about Shuri. I'm going to, but you know, what happens there? 
maybe another archetype maybe start people start playing shuri red skull again that's just another type of deck people can use on the ladder and as they note here in the developer note it's very important that new players and players in relatively low collection levels have a very strong good competitive deck to turn to and sauron shuri is exactly that the decks usually have almost to the entirety of three uh, three series uh, series three cards and i think that is very good for the game as a whole we want competitive options across the spectrum of collection levels and werewolf by night now this is interesting i don't know if this is enough now, obviously, he's languishing at a 44% winner. Once again, the meta share is so low that like these stats start to feel inaccurate. They're just we don't have the sample size. Werewolf by Night getting a one power buff is probably insignificant. However, he's the kind of card that if the perfect shell's figured out, then suddenly he has the ability to take over the game, take over the meta. I don't know if we're gonna see that. Uh, one power is just not quite enough, especially with like the amount of cards that we have, like kind of occupying space, the way the game's being played right now. However, you do have like some decks that might benefit from Werewolf by Night. We have some bounce lists that are starting to make a comeback. We have another card of uh, imbalance that's kind of getting buffed, and of course that might help Werewolf by Night. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's not the end of the road for Werewolf. This used to be an absolute meta dominator. And now it's uh, it's kind of a meta sheep. Like it's just we just don't see it. It's just, you just look at it and you're like, oh, I remember when that card was good. Does this change anything? I don't know. I'm not as sold on this one as some of the other changes we we're talking about right now. Another one power change. But again, you could make the argument that the hit monkey change might benefit the werewolf by night change. They've often been played in very similar decks. Listen. Werewolf by Night and Hitmonkey have something in common. They can take over a game. However, Werewolf by Night is more interactive. With Hitmonkey, it's often like, oh, look, a massive Hitmonkey just dropped and I couldn't do anything. Hitmonkey is the balance, is, is to balance what Hella is to discard. That uninteractive piece that throws up massive vertical power. Except, well, obviously, Hella's not necessarily vertical. It tends to be vertical and wide. Whereas Hitmonkey is like this pillar of power. And it used to be one of the absolute best cards in the game, and now we've seen a fall from grace. But plus two power per card being played is still significant, especially when you're able to start zooming things out with more confidence, and maybe that, that werewolf's on the field, right? So I do think that uh, these two buffs in tandem might actually kind of spur some interest in those types of decks. Are either of them going to, like, kind of break the mold? I don't know. I don't know if one power was what was killing him, Monkey. I don't know if one power was what was killing Werewolf by Night. I, they might need a little more. But I mean, it's very easy to get Hit Monkey. Like, I mean, just you play one card with Hit Monkey and it's a 3 5. That's what Viper is, right? That's what Black Swan is. And we talk about 3 5 being such a great style line. And it's so much easier for Hit Monkey to blow past 3 9 and above, right? So maybe this is it. Maybe Hit Monkey's back. I like the change. Hit Monkey's been completely irrelevant for so long. Now, here's one I both like, but also take issue with, okay? Yes. Lockjaw has been the type of card that's been completely out of the meta. We, we literally don't have stats for it, basically. From a 4-5 to a 4-4, but the key thing is, is they're getting rid of the once per turn uh, kind of phrasing here. You're able to rotate as often as you want through Lockjaw again. Does this bring back Thanos? Possibly, but I mean, remember the Mind Stone's too costed and stuff like that, right? Um, so it could be Thanos Lockjaw could be back. I don't know. It's still four costed. Zabu's not back, so it is still slow. Does this bring back Asgardians, right? I, mean, I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot 100%. You know I'm making a, Th a Thor Jane Foster deck tonight um, and tomorrow. And probably that's probably going to be my video tomorrow. Um, I just got to tell you, like, I'm excited for this. But I still think that this is an elegant design. I'm going to throw this out there again. I've said this many times. I'm going to throw it out there again. I think that Lockjaw should start as, like, say, a 3, 4, or whatever. Uh, whatever the power is. Let's say three, uh, 4, 4. Make it stronger. 4, 5. But every single time you put a card in there, or even if it's a three, because it, it makes much more sense as a three, four still feels pretty bad. You'll say it's a three, four. And every time you swap a card, it loses one power. I think that's way more interesting, right? Because eventually it could be a three, zero, but it swapped a bunch of cards. That mitigates the amount of power you're putting in there for free. But most importantly, it's also canon relevant. Because if you've watched Inhumans, you'll note that Lockjaw gets tired when he uses his teleportation abilities. So I do think that while this is an okay change, I would like to see Lockjaw, probably at three cost, that loses power every time he makes a swap. I think that is a much more elegant change than what is here. Now this is easier, sure. But Lockjaw like, is a very unique way to play Marvel Snap. And I would like to see it at least stay somewhat relevant, okay? That's my take. Is it gonna do enough? 
Is this enough? I think it might be. We'll have to see Thanos and Asgardians and see if it really makes Lockjaw kind of uh, relevant again. And thank you so much for watching, guys. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit it. If you haven't hit the uh, the like button, hit that as well. I would certainly appreciate it. We've got another video for you on the screen if you're interested in watching some more Marvel Snap content. And we'll see you on that next Marvel Snap video.